Come on. Baby needs a new hotel. I love games. I have a philosophy. It's not whether you win or lose. It's just important to have as much fun as you can. Yeah, my philosophy is win or die. So <laughs> give me Marvin Gardens. Would you mind watching the desk for a minute? Where's Dick and Joanna? In Dick's study being interviewed for the Sunday magazine. Why? Because Sunday magazine interviews interesting people in town, and they think that Dick and Joanna are interesting people. They never interviewed me. Maybe they don't think you're interesting. Well, then I hate them. <laughs> well, I'm going to serve them some coffee. Would you mind taking care of the desk in case anybody comes in? Sure. All right. Uh, excuse me, could someone help us? Yeah, she'll be back in a second. <laughs> I would have to say I don't think uh, either of us have ever been happier. I agree with Dick. The move to Vermont was the best thing we ever did. Oh, and you should know uh, Leslie Vanderkillen. This is Mrs. Vosper from the Weekly Horn. Hello. Hello. Uh, what do you do, Leslie? Well, I work part-time for the Loudons as a maid, and I'm also studying at Dartmouth for my master's degree in Renaissance theology. In her spare time, she's training to become a member of the United States Olympic ski team. And if that isn't enough, she makes a heck of a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's impressive. Thank you. Let me know if you need anything. Nice meeting you. Thank you, Leslie. All that, and she's pretty, too. Yes, Leslie's amazing. No, Leslie's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's get back to you two. What do you like most about each other? Mrs. Loudon? Oh, I don't know where to begin. Dick is so wonderful. He's kind and generous, fair, dedicated. He's handsome, creative and industrious and, well, just about the best all-round guy in the world. <laughs> you just did better than Leslie. <laughs> what do you like best about your wife? Oh, that's easy. I, I would say that uh, Joanna is a terrific homebody. I left out that he has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Why, did, did I say something funny? You said I was a homebody. No, I said you were a terrific homebody. Darling, that sounds like I'm somebody who's always home. Oh, well, you are. <laughs> well, I may be home, but I'm always busy. Well, then I guess I should have called you a busybody. <laughs> Dick! No, really, I, I love it that you're satisfied, uh, you know, being around the house with, with no responsibilities. What do you mean? Well, I, I didn't mean no responsibilities, but, I mean, all your responsibilities are, are here at the inn and not out in the real world. Sweetheart, I don't think that's right either. Well, Joanna, what do you want me to say? Well, I'd like you to make it clear to Mrs. Vosper that I don't sit around all day and knit. Oh, oh, I see, I see. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think I can explain. Um, well, in, in the first place, uh, Joanna doesn't know how to knit. <laughs> you, uh, you, don't, you don't really sew either, do you? No, and thank you so much for clearing that up. <laughs> Mrs. Loudon, why don't you tell me what you do? No, really, I'm much more interested in what Dick has to say. She's, a, she's teasing now. Oh, that, that's another quality I, I love about Joanna. She's a, she's a great teaser. <laughs> I'm not teasing. She's teasing now. Dick, quit stalling. Tell Mrs. Vosper what you think I do. No, I, I don't know exactly what you do. I mean, how could I? I'm always working. <laughs> and I'm not? Mrs. Loudon, for what it's worth, I'm on your side. I used to be home, I know what it's like. I admire any woman who chooses to stay there. The task is awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Vosper. In fact, I think you deserve an award. <laughs> Personally, it drove me up the wall. <laughs> the tedium, the endless days. I mean, how many soap operas can a person watch? I don't watch soap operas. Oh, I know, I didn't admit watching them either. <laughs> And the point is, I recognize your value. It takes a special kind of, what? Metabolism to do what you do. You mean a slower metabolism? Joanna. Like, say, a snake? 
<laughs> Honey, nobody said anything about snakes. No, I think that's accurate, Dick. You know how slow my metabolism is. I only eat twice a year. <laughs> Every March, I swallow a roast, and then I'm good until fall. <laughs> I'm sorry, have I touched a nerve? No, not at all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll go out and lie on a rock. <laughs> you gotta watch her, she'll tease your pants off. <laughs> making faces in my plate. That's what I thought. Why do you ask? No reason. So, how did that interview you had go today? Uh, it went fine. Uh, John, I, I hate to ask you this, but uh, do, do we have any gravy? Do I sense a little tension in the air? Everything is fine, Joy. Oh, good. You have your choice of gravies, dear. Beef, turkey, or giblet. Would you like some gravy, George? No. <laughs> you know, uh, Joanna, you, you can't stay mad at me forever. You're probably right, but let's wait and see. <laughs> what, what was so terrible about what I said? What was so terrible about what you said? What did you say? Nothing, George. Dick called me a homebody. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> no, it isn't. Then why aren't we having gravy? He doesn't know what I do all day. Well, I, I know you, you do things. Things? Let me tell you what I do. I run this in for one thing. I make breakfast every morning for at least a dozen people. I check guests in and out. With Leslie's help, I dust, I clean, I iron. I also do the bookkeeping. I polish, I restore, I refinish. Those are the kind of things I meant by things. <laughs> you know, I think I just realized why we bought this in. We bought it so I could kill myself working and you could walk through it every day and say, I love this inn. I'd love some more meat. <laughs> what I was trying to say today is I, I don't notice what you do because uh, people who are great at what they do always make it look so easy. I don't know. Maybe I'm just mad because I'm sensitive about it. I've always had other interests, at least till we moved here. Maybe deep down, I don't think what I'm doing is important enough. Well, what, what do you want to do? Maybe I could go back to school. I think that's a terrific idea. I'm too old. That's true. I am not. <laughs> it's always been one of the regrets of my life that I never got my degree. I came so close. What happened? I met Dick. Oh. <laughs> We were both working at the same ad agency in New York. He was a copywriter, and I was going to NYU and working part-time as a secretary. And when we got married, Dick quit his job to write, and I quit school so I could work full-time to support us. Not that I would have had it any other way. Uh, honey, if you want to go back to school or, or work outside the house, I mean, that, that's fine with me. But, I mean, you don't have to do those things to, to prove your worth to me. I, I, I've always thought of you as a bright, capable person who... Uh, who I've considered an equal and, and someone I could count on. Really? Absolutely. That's sweet. Now, would you make us some gravy?
There's a moral here, Dick. Keep your mouth shut. That's it. You certainly look nice for your job interview. Thank you. I think it's important to make a good first impression. I think so, too. Then I'd get whatever that is off your tooth. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I wonder how long I've been walking around like this. Oh, probably since you left your house this morning. Mrs. Loudon? Oh, yes. Hey, Roy Herzog. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Well, you all set? I think so. Okay, come on okay. in. Have a seat there and make yourself comfortable. Listen, you don't mind if I have lunch while we talk, do you? No, of course not. Go ahead. Well, I hate doing this in front of you, but it's been one of those days. Stuff's piling up. I'm short a person. The telephone's ringing. I have to interview people. I mean, I'm really swamped. Oh, darn it. What's the matter? Cheese. Jeez, I hate cheese. My wife knows I hate cheese. It seems like after you've been married for... Uh, I'm sorry, where was I? Uh, you were saying you're really swamped. Oh, yeah, well, you know how it is. Everybody wants to be a travel agent. I'm sure you have to be very selective. Yeah, well, we're a small office. We get a lot of repeat business. What in the hell is this? <laughs> Do you know what that is? Uh, well, I'm not sure, but it smells good. Yeah, well, then you take it. <laughs> so, where was I? Uh, you were saying it's a small office. You get a lot of repeat business. All right. You, you know, this is really, really a great business, and I'll tell you why. You're, you're fulfilling people's dreams, making them realize their fantasies by booking them to exotic lands and, and faraway places. What's the bus fare to Dayton? <laughs> it's in your files. Listen, could you give me a cup of coffee, a sandwich or something? Yeah, sure. Well, Mr. Herzog, the job certainly sounds exciting. It does? Yes. Well... Then can I be honest with you? By all means. You know, you, you've got a lot going for you. Oh, thank you. I mean, you're bright, you're pretty, your printing's real good. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, you'd make one heck of a travel agent. Well, I'd certainly do my best. But I'm not going to give you the job. Why not? Well, you haven't worked in several years. You don't need the money. <laughs> I'm afraid this is just a whim. A whim? Mr. Herzog, I would never come looking for a job on a whim. You wouldn't? No. I'm not some young girl fresh out of school trying to find herself. I'm a mature woman. And whether or not my husband is able to support me doesn't diminish my desire or, or capacity or right to work. Boy, that's a real good argument. <laughs> I bet you'd be terrific here. I bet you'd catch on fast. I bet you'd get to work every day on time. It's just that I know you're going to quit in two weeks. I'm not going to quit in two weeks. You're not? No. <laughs> Mr. Herzog, I've always been interested in travel, and I'm not just saying that because you were the only ad in the paper. Okay. Let me think. You're going to need a lot of training. It's taking a lot of supervision at first. It's going to take a lot of my time. So how soon could you quit and not make me crazy? Mr. Herzog, I'm not going to quit. You have my word. I don't know what else I can say to make you believe me. Okay, what the heck? You got the job. I do? You knew that. You knew that the minute you came in here. I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. You charmer, you. Come on, let me introduce you to everybody. Oh, Mr. Herzog, I'm so thrilled. I don't know what to say. You're not thrilled. You knew. <laughs> Very frank, I want you to meet your new co-worker. She got the job? Come on, you knew I was going to hire her. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to get started. Well, neither can we. Now, that'll be your desk right here. Betty, I want you to set her up with everything. Get her uh, some of those business cards and a calendar and uh, what's that? Staple remover. Get her one of those. I want her desk all set up and ready for business. First thing tomorrow morning, what if your husband gets sick? Then I quit. I knew that. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm here. Okay. It's a deal. Well, I'll see you tomorrow at 8. Uh, we don't start till 10. Then I'll take those two hours and memorize the globe. <laughs> Give me one of those. <laughs> All right, this game, I'm going to be the race car. I'm the top hat. Okay. What's the matter, George? I'm always the race car. 
right, that's silly. Come on, let's get going. Well, if it's silly, let him be the car. Never. <laughs> I'm not going to play. Good, it's just you and me, Leslie. The way it should always be. I'm not playing unless you give George the race car. Why can't the man be an iron or a shoe? <laughs> because I'm always the race car. Look, why don't you both be something else? What's the big deal? All right, I'll be the top hat. No way. Look, okay, come on. <laughs> Look, I'll be the Scotty, okay? Let's just get on with the game. Hi, everybody. Okay, you got the dice. You go first. Right. Guess what? I got a job. Three. One, two, three. Bordock Avenue, 60 bucks. I'll buy it. Well, I've told you. Guess I'll tell Dick. Dick? Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Yeah something to tell you, but it can wait. Great. Okay, that's enough waiting. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Dick, you won't believe what I did this morning. I don't believe what you did just now. <laughs> Dick, I've got a job. You're kidding. No. You are looking at a woman who from now on can take you to any city in the world anytime you want to go for practically nothing. You got a job as a pilot? No, Dick. I'm a travel agent. Great. Congratulations. You're surprised, aren't you? No. You're a little surprised. No. Well, no matter how surprised you are, apparently there are some people out there in the real world who don't think I'm such a hopeless homebody after all. Uh, Joanna, calling you a homebody was, was stupid. No, it wasn't. Well, it, it was thoughtless. It may have been the biggest favor you ever did for me. Okay, it was brilliant. <laughs> Don't you see? If you hadn't called me a homebody, I'd never have taken this job. Now, thanks to you, I'm going to be working with interesting people, doing stimulating things, getting paid for it. I don't have to be here all the time, doing all those routine things, like bookkeeping, taking reservations, and talking with the guests, listening to the sound of you typing. Knowing you're in the next room if I ever want to talk. Taking long walks with you on the spur of the moment. And, you know, just generally doing all those things that I love to do. Oh, Dick. Oh, honey. I'm such a dope. No, you're not. Yes, I am for listening to you. <laughs> oh. I mean, for listening to you and not listening to myself. Darn it, I like what I do here. I like taking care of this place and you and the guests. I like my life the way it is. Are you saying you, you like being a homebody? I hate that word. You're right, it's a disgusting word. Don't you understand? When you call me a homebody, it means you think I'm somebody who doesn't want to do anything. No, it doesn't. When, when I call you a homebody, it means somebody who does a lot. It's just that you do it at home. Somebody who doesn't do anything at home is called a, a sloth. <laughs> Welcome home. Nice to be back. Oh. Now, first thing in the morning, you call the travel agency and you tell them you change your mind. Oh, God. Now, now, what's the matter? Oh, you don't understand. I practically begged Mr. Herzog for that job. He didn't want to hire me because he said I'd quit in two weeks. Well, he's wrong. You're going to quit before you even start. It's not funny, Dick. This is exactly what he said would happen. He even accused me of being there on a whim. Can you imagine that? I have to be careful how I answer this. Well, there's just one thing I can do. I'm going to have to hold my head up high. March into his office tomorrow morning and make an utter fool of myself. Honey, I know you can do it. I feel funny about this. Maybe you should just wait in the car. Look, Joanna, this is as much my fault as it is yours. I, I think we should face it together. Okay. Good morning. Hi. Hi. 
Okay. I'd like you all to meet my husband, Dick. Honey, this is Betty and Frank. Hi. Hi. Did you come down to watch the first day? Well, I came down to watch the beginning of it. Oh, Dick, look. <laughs> Joanna, a name plaque is no reason to take a job you don't want. Morning! <laughs> That's him. All right, remember, be strong, and, and I'll be right here. Okay. Oh, well, well. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Herzog. I'd like you to meet my husband, Dick. Oh, hi. Hi. We're sure impressed with Joanna. We're looking forward to having her here. Well, I, I know she's looking forward to being here. <laughs> Mr. Herzog, could I speak to you privately for a moment? Oh, certainly. Uh, my office or yours? <laughs> Come on in. Have a seat. Tell you one thing, you sure do look pretty today. You're quitting, aren't you? Oh, no, 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 no. Then what did you want to talk to me about? Uh, well, the job and not taking it. You're quitting. I'm not quitting. I'm not starting. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Darn, 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 darn. Don't be upset. Rats, big, stupid rats. I know how this must look. Rats. I really do appreciate you giving me this job. Yo, yo, thanks a lot for coming in. It's just that, that things have changed since yesterday. God, I feel like such an idiot. You're an idiot! Well, I can understand you're being angry, and I don't blame you. I, I just wish there was some way I could show you how sorry I am. How about hanging yourself? Do you have cats? Uh, no. Are you sure? Are you all right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I got like that. That's okay. It's, you made a mistake. You're human. We're all human. Thank you for being understanding. I just don't know what to do. Just, just say we'll be friends. Say it! Oh, we'll be friends. Now get out. Ah, there you are. How'd it go? Let's just say it's over. What do you mean? I won't be taking the job after all. Oh, no, really? Oh, what a disappointment. You owe me ten bucks. <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, I'm sorry the way I acted in there. That's okay. I really feel terrible about it. I just want you both to know if you ever want to take a trip any place at all, just give us a call. We'll set you up real nice. Well, that's really sweet. Thanks. If they call, send them someplace with bats. 